there were a few things that were really important to me that 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 I was able to um, look like the character, and he had white hair, um, and I wanted to sound Eastern European because he was that's where Sokovia was set. It was set somewhere in Eastern Europe, and um, and Joss immediately said, "Absolutely, you know, I want you to do what you do, and uh, and that's great, and that's why I come to you." But um, but we'll have to screen test that. Can I break down the character instantly from the screenplay? Um, generally, generally, I would already have some kind of um, natural uh, reaction to the script. Like I relate to the character, or I've just been on this journey, and you know. And then that's kind of how you know whether you want to do the project or not, because you've felt in you've felt you've gone on a journey, you've felt emotionally um, attached to this character and then, so in which case you kind of, you go on that trajectory. Um, but not, not you can't really essentially uh, do that kind of groundwork or at least if you do, you're an actor who's just, um, you're, you're just working for yourself, you know. Uh, the thing is, I guess a lot of people don't understand or have trouble with um, is that uh, acting is a process and it, 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 it it's a collaboration and it really comes down with the filmmaker and the director so um, you got you got to discover it together it, it might feel like it's on page 68 and it's at this monumental event or this moment but it might actually come sooner when you're making it and you just never know um, and they might just find that they want to discover it later on in the edit so um so you really don't have control of uh when you know when there's a pinnacle you know moment in which uh, that happens but yeah you you got to feel instinctively uh to it in, from the beginning from the get-go otherwise there is no input you can't you gotta you gotta draw from somewhere so um yeah yeah you've got to feel that pull right away when you read the script absolutely yeah, yeah. yeah. and and obviously yeah i was drawn to a lot of characters you know, who go on uh, an arc and have a dynamic and a journey and an obstacle and what have you. Uh, you know, most lead characters are going to do that anyway. Uh, a lot of characters around that don't have that sort of arc, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. Now you are 26, and you have two decades, 20 years of acting experience. We're going to get into a lot of that tonight, um, which is extra really extraordinary to think about. When you were six, uh, your first acting experience on... <laughs> Like it's like this is your life, right? Yeah, uh, I'm ready to retire. By <laughs> I'm already. Uh. No, don't retire. There's so much more to come from you. There's so much great stuff. But in Inspector Calls, you were six years old, right? You guys, you were doing it. You were, you, there was a quote that you gave where you said you were going on stage about the time that most six-year-olds were going to bed, and then you're kind of coming home at midnight. I'm wondering when you were doing Inspector Calls, did you feel at that point that that was your calling, or that in some ways your your calling had found you? Yeah, I mean, I don't think I could comprehend what I was really doing at six years old. Um, <laughs> but the beauty of it that, you know, and I have, I've got kids and my daughter is, you know, I've got a four-year-old and a six-year-old. And, um, and uh, I couldn't imagine that she'd be doing what I was doing. Um, it's almost like child labor, I guess. Uh, <laughs> um, the What's beautiful, though, be, be, being a child and, and doing that is it, it really comes from um, from 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 deep within a, a passion. Um, there's nothing more to it than than feeling uh, alive on stage and being able to just take direction at an early age, do what I was supposed to do, and uh, yeah, and have the stamina and the energy to do it every uh, every three times a week. I think at that time and. Um, and then I, you know, I, I lived outside of the city. I think it's a, it's a, it was a show in the West End in London, sorry, and uh, and I lived outside of the city. So I'd have a chaperone who would drive me up. We'd do the show. The curtain call would leave, and yeah, I'd be back at uh, home by midnight. School in the morning, you know, like any other kid's normal routine, um, with no sort of whisper of what I'd been doing the night before. Yeah. You also had said that. Uh, that you always felt comfortable being other people, not yourself. Like that sort of was a comfortable thing. One of the reasons that acting appealed to you is you were able to kind of be somebody else. Is that still part of the appeal for acting for you? Oh, absolutely. I, I mean, I 
think um, that's the beauty in, in it. It's the fantasy um, to uh, indulge and dive into and study, you know, people and characters and uh, be able to go on ludicrous journeys that I probably wouldn't do in my personal life. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and I think from an early age, it was like an escapism, really, you know, and therapeutic. And uh, so. Were you a comic book kid when you got the lead in Kick-Ass? <laughs> and we should note this if people don't know it, but for posterity, that Kick-Ass, uh, in addition to being a verb and an adjective, is also the name of your character's alter ego in that terrific film. Were you up on the culture of comics when you uh, went for the audition for that? Uh, no, no, I wasn't. <laughs> uh, um, no, I, yeah, it, it, it was a world, um, yeah, that I, I, I definitely wasn't uh, um, grasped into. I mean, yeah. the I irony is that I've now done quite a few sort of comic book movies. <laughs> <laughs> Have you gone back to read some? Have you gone, oh, this is what they were all talking about at 17 when I was... Yeah, no, I mean, I, the only, I do, obviously, I read them um, purely just for the... Yeah character um yeah kick-ass kick-ass was interesting because um and, and i think as well at the time uh only maybe one um one little issue was you know one or two issues were out of kick-ass so um i actually read mark miller's uh, uh wanted and things like that uh, earlier sort of yeah. graphic novels and yeah. things to kind of get the kind of tone of what yeah. what he's like but um yeah, it was it was interesting. That was kind of great, actually, to be kind of coming out at the same time as uh, the comic book. You did another one, a much more serious one, in uh, the blockbuster Avengers sequel, Age of Ultron, which I actually think is a terrific movie. But your performance, in particular, as uh, as Pietro Maximoff as Quicksilver, there is a, an aspect. We're going to talk about that and Godzilla kind of combined because I think there's an art to the blockbuster, and I think that I've said this a couple of times about comic book movies, which is that they're like the westerns of this era. Just like the westerns were in the 50s and 60s. You're going to have high and you're going to have low. And anything with Marvel is generally going to be on the high end. And one thing that you bring to that character is sort of a sense that, to my eyes, felt like he was like a, a refugee survivor from a, from a war-torn country. Like that character really has a lot of depth and pain going on in him. How did you approach that? And then we'll kind of segue from that to, to Godzilla. Yeah, well, I think that was just... That was Joss's kind of interpretation of being able to set it in a world that we all know today, I think. You know, there's obviously that is constantly going on and people want to kind of turn a blind eye to, uh, you know, w refugees and what have you. And I think, um, and it, it, it just fit, it f fit perfectly for these two characters. Um, and then, you know, and how they wanted to kind of pull perspective on, you know, incorporate the world in Avengers and, and kind of look back and think of, you know, Avengers is, uh, is America and what do we, you know, and see everyone's perspective. So it was an, I it was an interesting angle and uh, I think it's him trying to be edgy and controversial and it's smart, but obviously everyone knows it's a, it's a commercial blockbuster movie. So, can only indulge so much in politics and everything and, uh, and economics and I think um, um, but the interesting the funny thing about um, Avengers Marvel it's 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 a big entity it's a machine it's um, it's a studio in itself and 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 I always think it's really interesting though what Marvel did because Marvel as a studio, only makes m their own movies. They only make their own characters in Marvel, so they care. You know, it's an interesting. Most studios can make big, big blockbuster movies, yeah. but their 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 main goal is to make a lot of money. And yeah, I'm not saying Marvel isn't, and there's a big franchise element to it, but they actually want to make a lot more movies. So they really do care about their characters, and they care to they care about how they're going to be seen and um, so you actually got a collaborative process instantly with the producers in the studio, and which was really quite lovely. And um, but the process starts a good year and a half before they even start making a movie. So I was approached by Joss before I'd even started shooting Godzilla the year before. Wow. So um, and Godzilla was a lot of fun to make. I'm assuming, right? That was like a real. That was a challenge, but it was also probably a bit of a kick. It was something new for you to do. Yeah. No, Godzilla was. Um, well, I'll just, I'll just jump back because Joss, what was interesting was that um, 
there was a a, a a comic book that we worked from for Avengers. Um, there is a series that they they were using, and um, there were a few things that were really important to me that 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 I was able to um, look like the character, and he had white hair, um, and I wanted to sound Eastern European because he was that's where Sokovia was set. It was set somewhere in Eastern Europe. And um, and Joss immediately said, absolutely, you know, I want you to do what you do, and uh, and that's great, and that's why I come to you. But um, but we'll have to screen test that, and we'll have to try those out, and there's a process, and you know, and it, it was interesting. But and we ended up the way we wanted it to be. But it was um, but that was great, and 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 um, yeah, Godzilla. Godzilla just before that was. That was a big move. It was a big move for me. Um, I already had. I already struggled a bit with, um, with 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 the idea that the more I did, the or if the sort of success that comes with uh, acting. Like I said, I started when I was really young, so it kind of came from a pure um, feeling of just passion and love, and, and and the other side of it, the attention and the what have you comes comes with it. I had to learn along the way, and it's something I, I, I find uncomfortable and um, and some sometimes intrusive and what have you. And you just deal with it, and you you have to learn it. Um, so I kind of avoided any big movie before that point. And I know Kickass was big, but it was independently funded, right? It was not studio movie. So that was that was kind of like the first realm, and it and then it sh and then I, I closed down a bit, you know. It was like this is uh, I got a bit self destructive and was a bit uh, it wasn't for me, and then I wanted to s just stay stick on a trajectory of just smaller movies, independent films. And Godzilla came around, and you know, firstly I was just like this, you know, like am I uh, as if I'm gonna do Godzilla and whatever that's you know some monster movie kind of thing. And I, I I just I thought that my when my manager told me about it, I just laughed and uh, <laughs> no, but honestly, what what else have we got around? What else is gonna? Yeah. What else can we do? Um, and um, but then uh, it was the filmmaker Gareth Edwards was the real poor and 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 at the time I uh, that year he just brought out a movie. Um, was it called Monsters? Right? Was it called Monsters? That he shot for barely anything, and um, and it was incredible. It was Scoop McNeary, I think, is the lead yeah, in that, and right. he's yeah. incredible. And and I and I and I just remember it just being so uh, beautifully shot and well directed, and like it was improvised. Was it improvisation or was that? Ri I can I, I I knew that moment. I was like, okay, wait, I'll s let me sit down with him and what's uh, let me hear what he has to say. Which is another eye opener, by the way. I didn't know this is a really interesting new thing I've learned. You know, is that and all all these jobs I've taken. You know, you learn something. Um, there was no script. It was a big blockbuster monster movie, but it's the filmmaker. It really is. It always comes down to the filmmaker, and uh, and I'm always intrigued now. No matter what, you kind of got to take these things without judgment and um, criticism, and and I, you know, I was too quick to be cynical and what have you. And <coughs> and the guy's a genius. Um, I think the guy's the sweetest, loveliest guy. He's modest and humble, but we were supposed to have a thirty-minute meeting, and it turned into six hours of us just like just pulling apart ideas, and because there was no script, so he was just like. Talking about character and where I want to take you, and the gen and it was so collaborative in this working with him that it just felt like it, I don't know. It, it was a it was a new jump. Ray Marcus, your character in Nocturnal Animals, really does not have a soul, which is part of the point. This beautiful film, it is so extraordinary. One of the things about it is, to my eye, it's about how it's about brutality in art and about emotional brutality in life and how sometimes the latter can bleed into the former. Um, God, how did you approach this very, very dark <laughs> character and, and where did you want to go with it? Where did you see it going? Um, I don't think I approached, approached it. It approached me. I think um, Tom rather flatter flatteringly uh, called 
to say I'm interested in you for my uh, second film and 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 I was instantly thrilled and flattered and excited and um and then when I read the role that he thought of me I was kind of perplexed as to why uh <laughs> wait so you want me to be a psychopath and a rapist and a murderer yeah. okay all right. Um, in, a, in a story within a story, we should probably, without giving anything away, there's a, a story within the story of Nocturnal Animals, which is where Aaron's character is. And it is, it is, there's a lot to it. Yeah, no, it's complex. And I, and listen, I, 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 it, it took me some time to um, compress uh, w that, that, that role because it wasn't instantly uh, relatable or anything that I've said to you so far today that you need to connect with the character. It was the opposite and um, that's why it became the challenge. That became the thing of like, well, all right, well, then, then go to what I know best is, is, is work with the filmmaker. Who, what's his vision for it? How does he see this being... Um, and we created something that I felt happy doing. And I, I actually felt more, I, sp I mean, maybe I didn't really know. You never really know if things work or not. But what I felt was actually more important than that. It was, it was I felt secure with, with Tom, Tom Ford, who directed the movie. He, he made me feel like I, I just, I put my full trust in him and, and, and I and was able to, therefore just explore and play.